Okay, let's go through how to create a child domain or a tree domain. Now, let me tell you what we've got done on the server so far. So we have an existing domain. It's Dalton.local is the name of our domain. And that is a forest root domain. And so now I'm going to add on to it. So this is going to be the server that's going to form the second one. We're going to talk about how to do both a tree, a separate tree, and a separate child domain. Um, I have this uh, device already configured, so I've given it a name and I have an IP address set up and it is currently using the existing DNS server and we're going to leave it that way. It's going to use that existing DNS server as uh, its, domain's, uh, D its, its domain name server and we're doing that so it can contact the forest route. Okay. So that's what we've got set up so far. Oh, and I've installed uh, ADDS. The role, we haven't promoted it yet. So we have our little notification here. We need to promote this to a domain controller. All right, we've seen this option before. Add a domain controller to an existing domain. That just adds an additional DC to that domain. Add a new forest is what we do when we're creating a brand new forest. But if we want a separate domain, that's related to our existing forest, that's this option right here. Add a new domain in an existing forest. Now, parent domain, Dalton.local. Uh, we can do two different types. So we can do a child domain or a tree domain. Now, a child domain is going to share a namespace. So what I would do is I would put in, let's just call it child, and this domain now will be child.dalton.local. That will make it that child domain. If I want to do another tree, then I'd come in here to do a tree domain. And I'm going to do this one, tree. And notice tree isn't good enough. That's because a tree domain doesn't share the namespace. So it's not tree.dalton.local. I have to set up a full domain name for it. So there'll still be a relationship between dalton.local and, in this case, tree.local. But they don't share the same namespace. That's the difference between a tree domain and a child domain. A tree domain is going to have a different, uh, a different registered domain. All right. For the in this case, just to simplify it, let's go ahead and go back to the child, and we'll do a child domain. Other than that, this is pretty much going to be the same between doing a child domain and a tree domain. And then the way we manage the trust relationships between the two is going to be identical because they're part of the same forest. Now, I need to supply credentials, and since I'm logged in here as my local admin, that won't work. So I'm going to do a change, and I need to, since I'm adding a new tree to the forest, I need to do a forest level administrator. So I'm going to do Dalton to identify the uh, forest root domain and administrator. So that's my administrator account or an administrator account with the permission to do this inside that forest root domain. All right. So domain controller options. Let's try this again with seeing if I can type my password correctly. Okay, close that little notification. And next. Now we'll see if we can log in. So far looks promising. All right, domain controller options. Now, because we're doing a separate domain, we can choose uh, a different domain uh, function level. However, the domain function level we're using can't be lower than the forest function level. So just keep that in mind. So I can't do a 2012 Windows Server 2012 because my forest function level is a server 2016. You can't put a domain, even a child domain or a tree domain, you can't put its forest function level or domain function level lower than the forest function level. All right, options. I can choose whether I want this to be a DNS server or not. I can choose whether I want it to be a global catalog. Notice that this one has to because it's beginning of a new domain. Um, global catalog. Uh, is an option because if I don't make it a global catalog, it won't contain the global catalog entries for everything else in the forest. 
in this case, I wanted to go ahead and keep that, so I'm going to leave it as a global catalog server. My password, and this is going to be the DSRM password. And, oh, I need to specify a site. So we're going to put this in, we'll leave it in Yakima because that's where its IP address matches. All right, create a DNS delegation, credentials to use for that. All of that looks good. Click Next. Now, the rest of this is going to be pretty much what we've done anytime we create a new domain or a new forest, or promote anything for that matter. We're setting a NetBIOS domain name, and Windows is going to take a minute to think about it before coming back with its recommended NetBIOS domain name, which is fine. Paths, where we're going to hold everything, is Next. And like we've talked about in other videos about promoting domain controllers, if you're going to have a big Active Directory database, you might not want these on your C drive. But in this case, this is a test environment, and I don't have another volume to put it on anyway. So I'm going to leave that where it's at. We will review our options, run our prerequisites check, and notice that the server will automatically reboot at the end of this promotion operation. And that's pretty much consistent with any Active Directory promotion or demotion. When you get done with it, it's going to force the system to reboot. All right, prerequisites uh, passed. We will click Install. And at this point, it will begin installing. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this continues to run. And then when it gets done, we will come back to our video and we'll look at what we have accomplished. Okay, so our domain controller has finished installing. Now let's take a look and see what we've got. I'm going to go to Tools and Active Directory Users and Computers. And we have an error. And the reason we have an error is because it's trying to contact the old domain. Okay, so I'm going to change domain, and I am going to connect to child.dalton.local. And I still have an error. There we go. All right. Give it a second. It'll get there. All right, so now that I've got two domains, I need to think this through. Because if you look at my server name right here, in fact, let me go to child.dalton.local, go to Domain Controllers, and you'll see I've got David2, which now has a full name of David2.child.local. <clears throat> and here I have my default users and my computers, and everything else is related to my child domain. Now, I'm currently logged in as the administrator of that child domain. So if I go to my command prompt, wait for my command prompt to come up here, and issue the command as soon as it becomes available, who am I? You'll see that I am the administrator of child. I am not the administrator of the um, Dalton.local account. So when I go to my change domain, change domain controller, I need to remember which domain that I'm on. That's what generated those errors. But you can see now that we have this domain created. Let's hop out of here real quick, and I'm going to open up my remote desktop again, and I'm going to connect to my parent domain, 192.168.4.10. And this is, let me see if I can type it in correctly. So this is my parent domain, or my forest domain, uh, domain controller. So from here, let's wait for server manager to load for us. And now remember, I'm in my parent domain or my forest root domain, uh, logged in as an administrator for the forest root domain, which has privileges across the entire forest. So if I go to It'll take a second because it's still loading server manager here. 
Tools, Active Directory, Users, and Computers. Let's see what we have here. So here I have my Dalton.local with all the stuff that I'm used to seeing. I can also oh, notice when I come up here, it tells me my domain controller is david.dalton.local. So I can also change domain here and let me connect to child.dalton.local and hit OK. Now, again, we're going to have security issues. Um, primarily in this case, I think, because we have uh, DNS-related issues because I haven't set up my DNS to handle name resolution because this thing is only resolving to its own uh, DNS server. It's only using itself as a DNS server. So when you're working with multiple domains, remember you're going to need to resolve that. So you're going to need to have them all working off the same DNS server, which has uh, records for all of your domains. Or you're going to need to do um, forwarders to forward requests to the other domain controllers. So that takes you real quick through the process of... Um, promoting a contr domain controller, creating a child domain or a tree domain. Just remember that when you do so, you got to resolve the DNS information as well. So um, we'll go ahead and close this one out. This also, because we now have multiple domains uh, in play, we can now look at trust relationships, but we're going to do that on a subsequent video.